programs that we have here today, this is the one that is the, the most of a hybrid of kind of uh, things that are enabled by network media, network culture, and things that are uh, also existing in other forms as well. Um, so just a quick uh, couple notes about John. Um, for many years was the executive director of what I would regard as the kind of golden age of the Los Angeles Film Forum uh, here in LA, LA's oldest uh, alternative exhibition venue. He's now with Free Speech Television in Colorado, and uh, we're very pleased to have him here and uh, to present the program that he's curated and uh, to make a few opening remarks. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, Steve, for the, for the intro. And I just I do want to say a, a word of thanks to, to Steve and, and to Mimito for pulling this together to the incredible curatorial team that it's really been a, uh, a privilege for me to work with. I've learned a lot about the genres that, frankly, I didn't even know existed before I was drawn into this, into this project. Uh, also, thanks to, to Charlene and Mari and, and to Sarah for coordinating all the logistics of this, and of course USC and the Garden Foundation. So it takes a, an awful lot to pull off a, a, a conference of this scope and size. I had the pleasure of living and working in Los Angeles from 1991 to 94 with a film forum. I had a chance to, to meet and work with many of you. It's good to, to see many of you again. And at that time, a uh, film forum Showed, when I first came here, it showed all this exclusively experimental media, experimental film, actually. It was a very, like, a purist organization. It was 16 millimeters, Super 8 film, almost entirely. And the 90, early 90s, mid-90s were kind of a, a period of transition. There was a lot of video work that, that, that was being made, and a lot of filmmakers were beginning to move over to video, and that kind of, that line of, of the format began to, to blur. And we, uh, film form began showing video as well as film. It also began um, expanding outside of just strictly you know, formalist experimental media into more activist media as well. And it was part of that trajectory which took me to, to film, uh, Free Speech TV, a full-time national progressive television network. We're based in Denver, Colorado, and we reach about 30 million homes every day through full-time carriage on Dish Network, one of the satellite television systems. And we reach about an, another 15 million homes um, on a weekly basis through a network of about 170 community cable stations. And Free Speech TV's mission is to use the power of media, electronic media, um, television, and the internet in particular, to really fuel a movement for progressive social change. We, we know how powerful television can be at creating active citizens, or, or I'm sorry, active consumers. And what Free Speech TV wants to do is to take that same power and wield that to create informed and active and civically engaged global citizens. Um, we see our, our work as really helping to, to connect activists with producers, with audiences, to help build and support a growing progressive movement. Uh, so that's my, that's been my background. Um, in terms of, of online work, Free Speech TV has uh, an active website, freespeech.org. Um, we began streaming videos on uh, on freespeech.org in the late 90s. We were one of the, the, the first websites to begin streaming progressive media online. We currently have a, a collection of about 16, 1700 titles that can be streamed there. We also have an online community that uh, where people can come and post their own blogs and blogs and it's a, a, it's a community for user generated content. So I was very happy to get a, an invitation to come and participate in this, in this conversation about where digital media tools are taking us. Um, initially, I was asked to, to curate under the genre of, of documentary. And that was um, a little intimidating in that it's such a, a large genre. Um, and so I, I thought, well, to make this, given that I have about 60 minutes of programming time and about you know, 20 minutes to con or 10 minutes to contribute to a larger program on Saturday night. I think I need to, to narrow that down, and I decided I, I would, you know, 
work off of what I, I knew best, which was activist media. Um, that, e even that kind of presents a, a bit of a challenge in a format like this, uh, in that most documentaries and, and a lot of uh, activist work tends to be long form work. And this is, you know, when you're trying to provide something that is um, comprehensive, it's very difficult to do that with, uh, with a short period of time of long form work. So we're in the early stages of a fundamental transformation in how we create, share, and view dynamic visual media. This transformation is enabling a new media ecology that can support widespread amateur video creation and peer-to-peer -peer and many-to-many -many distribution to audiences both large and small. And if, if you've read through the, some of the, the literature about this, this conference, there, uh, there are uh, at least blushes at times of um, utopian in the, in the rhetoric, and, and there's some emancipatory claims about what media and new technology can, can do for us. And I, I think indeed that potential is there. And it reminds me of another very unique historical moment that's very similar to the one we find ourselves in today. When I go back 40 years to uh, 1968, when Sony introduced its first Porta Pack, its first portable video camera. Uh, this was the, the first time that that consumers, that activists, that artists really had access to portable video technology to go out and make their own media uh, to, uh, to tell stories, to go into their communities, and to be able to, to shoot something and show it back immediately as opposed to film where you had to send it off to the lab and have it processed and, you know, a days or weeks later, you get it and get a splice it all together. It really changed the the, the whole um, you know media ecology, to use the, the language of this of this conference. Um, and this you know, that was a time of, of really great promise and, and great strife here in the U.S. Again, not unlike the moment we find ourselves in today. Uh, it was the time when there was a growing anti-war movement. People at home were saying, "Enough! Let's let's end this mad with madness." Bring our, bring our troops home. Um, it was a time of the civil rights movement. Uh, it was a time when people were critiquing the very economic and social foundations upon which this country has been built and, and critiquing the, the unjust structures upon which this country has been built. It was a very, very vibrant time. And the people who picked up those video cameras, for many of them, they saw their role as being not only to uh, to record that revolution out in the streets in all its forms, but also to play a role in fueling that revolution, coming up with new forms of media, uh, telling the stories that would provoke people to question uh, the status quo, to question their own their own uh, assumptions and to take action. I saw the development of some of the early video collectives, and I'm speaking here of uh, groups like, uh, with names like Video Freaks, uh, TV TV, People's Video Theater, Broadside TV, and Newsreel. And this was a time when liberation politics mixed very easily with anarchist escapades. It was a time when community-based storytelling mingled freely with formal experimentation, and, and we'll see a few works from that period of time. Uh, those groups turned over the mantle in the 1980s to a new generation of media activists. In the 1990s, late 1990s, uh, as we saw the internet becoming um, an increasingly important form for um, for distributing cultural messages and including video, we see the birth of uh, what's known as the, the indie media movement. And that, that really came together at a very particular time in 1999, in November. The WTO ministerial meetings were held in Seattle. And large cross issue movements uh, came to Seattle to protest the devastating economic policies of the World Trade Organization. And joining them in the center of Seattle to say no to corporate globalization 
was a growing movement of independent media makers. Um, and a few of them said, well, we know people are convert media makers from print, from radio, from television, from internet, uh, photography are all are all descending upon Seattle. Let's create a convergence center where we can where we can pool our resources and where we can support each other's work in getting these messages out. Um, and that and thus was born the first uh, independent media center in Seattle. And you did throughout the, the course of what ended up being some very volatile days of protests, protests that that thwarted the, the progress of the WTO uh, in, in November of 99. During those days, the media activists would go out in the streets, shoot their video, come back to the, I, the IMC. Um, there would be teams that would edit that, and they, they produced uh, half-hour episodes of reports every day. They turned those around very quickly, with, within a number of hours, and those were then broadcast on free speech TV and community centers Around the around the country within uh, within the next 24 hours, um, and then there was the creation of the indie media website, which was a portal. It was you know it was one of you know the, the first uh, it was an early progressive media portal where anyone could come and upload their own video, their own text, their own photos of what was happening. And this actually this did have have an impact uh, on. On, the, on the, the mainstream corporate coverage, uh, there, the, the riot police in, in Seattle uh, began shooting the rather large rubber bullets at the protesters on the streets. Um, the, the, the corporate media, CNN, was denying that that was happening. Um, eventually, some, uh, some uh, indie media folks were able to get uh, some video of uh, someone with a big welt uh, holding up the rubber bullet uh, with which she had been shot and posted that on, on the IMC website confirming that indeed uh, the police were using these rubber bullets and shortly thereafter CNN changed its story and said yes and now you know we now have confirmation that that, uh, that there is use of force against the, the protesters happening so that was a, a very particular uh, moment as as well in the in the development of kind of a, a, a radical, collective, independent media praxis. So what I, I, I hope to do in, in my program today is to connect some of these dots, to show this trajectory, to show this um, development of this American uh, independent, radical media praxis.